Here's what I did. I air arced that washer off the top of here. Kind of nice, it's got a little bit of shoulder right there that makes it smaller than the actual bore that that washer sat on. Put a little dimple right in the middle of the top. Um, as near as I can tell, it is not hung up in this top bushing. It's all on the bottom. I'm gonna give that a few good blows with the sledgehammer and see if it moves. If not, I've got a jackhammer for rocks. I'm gonna set right on the top of that and try to drive this pin out of there. Let's get you guys set up. Well, that's the ticket. It's finally moving. It's actually flush with the top now. Let's get that damn thing out of there. Well, that makes sense. Lower bushing came out with the pin. That's no big deal. I can cut it or put it in the press. There's a lot of my wear right there. You can actually see a sway back in that pin. Oh, kind of makes me wonder if we're going to have to build it up and turn it back down on the lathe. Like I said, you can't get that bolt anymore. That's what we were after, though. Got her out of there. The old railroad sledgehammer, I think. I don't really know the name for this. I think that's what it was used for, though. Did the trick to drive her home. Rock on, on to the next step. Got that shaft here in the Harbor Freight 20 ton press. Put a little force on it. I hate doing this. You never really know how much you have on something. I think I'm gonna have to give it some heat too. Usually you need to give it a lot more than that. Wow. Hopefully get this where you guys can see it. It's just stuck on that old bushing. That's the good part about that is the shaft is not wore right there. But where that bushing went into might be wore. At least gives me an idea how much I need to build that stuff up. I was thinking about making a whole new pin, but it's a goofy size. It's 1.990. I guess I could get a two inch piece of stock and I'd have to build the threads and this shelf on this end probably wouldn't take a whole lot, um, but I don't have any stock to do that. So I think I'm going to build this up all the way around and then just turn it back down. Probably be the fastest. I can do that today. I'd have to wait, get a piece of stock tomorrow. I honestly don't know what you're supposed to make these out of either. Um, like I said in a prior video, I think usually you want the bushings to be harder than the pins. So it wears the pins out, and then you would just put a new pin in. Um, so I guess I could do a hardness test on the 
bushings and figure out how hard they are and then build a pin to accommodate that. But I think if I remember right, wire out of a MIG welder usually ends up, I want to say somewhere around like 40 to 50 Rockwell. I might just completely be talking out my butt too, but it seemed like I'd looked into doing that or how, what the hardness was. Cause when I got this anvil, I wanted to uh, clean the top up and remachine it. And I was thinking about doing it, but you could almost ruin an anvil doing that too, especially if you don't know what you're doing. So I just left it alone. It's good enough for baiting on, but I think I'm gonna get the shaft set up here in this manipulator. We'll make some passes around this guy and try to get that done tonight and then maybe machine it tomorrow night. Let it cool down in the in-between. Okay, we're set up in the manipulator. Um, this is strictly made just for welding off of. Uh, it's way overkill for what I need, but I do build some engines off of this. So it kind of doubles as an engine stand in the shop. It's got a foot pedal. You can make it spin either direction, or you can stand things straight up and spin them that way. You hook your ground up down here. It's on the back side on a pivot there, so it uh, keeps your piece grounded. I went ahead and preheated this shaft. We'll see how much it's up to. Looks like almost 400 degrees in spots, 300 and some. That'll be plenty hot for this. Let's get uh, set up here and I'll make some passes around here. We really don't need a whole lot of material added and uh, it's plumb obvious where it needs to go. stat here you would be uh, surprised on how slow you actually need this to go so you can weld it it does not need to go very fast at all. of course the tip's dirty on the welder in order to get that knocked off before we start. Didn't turn out too bad. Uh, this was kind of strange. This time, just building up this shaft, I needed to go way faster than I ever have. Get you zoomed in here and let you take a look. Turned out all right though. But I really wasn't trying to stack much on there because it's just going to need machined off. But uh, that's just the difference. I usually weld a pipe on here and I end up going a lot slower. I almost couldn't go near fast enough this time. But we'll get out here to this end and do these other two spots and I'll bring you back when I'm done. Okay, there it is. I tried to leave just a tiny 
touch that shaft without burning it off on the outside edge kind of give me an idea where I'm going you guys can see how hot it is still a little bit red Let's see what old Harbor Freight has to say about it <laughs> hey yeah I bet it is must be over a thousand degrees probably huh well, somebody smarter than me probably knows if I ruined that shaft or not, but they don't make them anymore to buy a new one. And I don't have any material that size to make one, but it kind of surprises me how shaky I am at doing that now. Years ago, I used to stand at the back of a pickup and I would weld stuff off of that rollout wheel laying down there all day long and I'd stick weld it and I used to do a lot better than that but kind of out of practice but that'll machine off there probably didn't need to stack that much on there but we'll conquer that tomorrow let that cool down overnight and put it in the south bend tomorrow See if I can't make a shaft out of it and redeem myself from the last machining project on this dozer. That little sensor over there that I destroyed. See you guys tomorrow. Got it turned down on the lathe. Bushings fit. Fairly tight. I guess. Tomorrow, it will be time to get some of these drove out of there. I'm still waiting on a few of them. I could probably use, reuse some of these, but uh, we'll figure that out later. Back on the dozer today. Got a bunch of parts in the mail. Yesterday, Saturday morning, it's time to get these old bushings out of here. Except for this one, of course, because it came out with the pin. But uh, I got four brand new bushings. They're all stuck. I've kind of rattled on them with the air hammer. But I think what I'm going to do is uh, kind of treat them like a bearing race and a hub. I think I'm going to weld some passes around the inside. What that does is when it cools, it makes that race contract. And then hopefully it'll drive out of there or fall out of there we'll give that a try here's what i did just ran a whole bunch of passes around the inside of that old bushing what that does is when it cools down it makes that bushing contract and then uh, it dropped down a little ways further but i actually used the new bushing to drive it out just with the Oh, what is it? 16 pound sledge. So, one down, two more to go to get out, anyways. Show you what I got going here. I have my old pin lining up an old bushing and a new bushing. Piece of half inch bar stock on a jack. I'm not sure how many ton this little guy is. It's mostly. The height that makes it fit in there i use this to push the new bushing into the bottom and now i'm using it to put the one in the top get some pressure on it give it a tap that vibrates this whole deal made it jump up into place do that and get the last bushing in weld the washer back on this pin then we're ready to reassemble some of this stuff Okay, bushings are in, pins in. Got the nut threaded back on, tack welded on there, welded that groove up where the cotter pin used to be. Not necessary, but keep some dirt out of there. Bought myself a two and three eighths socket for the old earthquake. That worked great to run that back on. Didn't have to do it with the wrench. Oh, next thing, I should be able to put these pins back in. 
Need to get that bushing out of there. Lift the tilt cylinder back up out of there, get it put back on. Once I get those, then I've got pins and bushings for in here. And I'll show you what else I got in the delivery. I guess just bushings for the lift cylinders. This is for that tilt cylinder, some new roll pins, koozie, bunch of other random consumables that I use around the shop. You know, these are spade butt connectors, nipple clamps, I mean uh, cable clamps, alligator jumper wires, because I go through them. Just broke my seal puller the other day and my remote start i guess you'd say these are some uh, clear lenses for the welding hood but this is the good crap here this is a new back and a new bottom for the seat that's gonna look sharp let's get this thing done and get it out of the shop long time coming so yesterday afternoon i got the blade put back on all that's tightened up. It's really nice shape. Um, but we still got these pins down in here on the lift cylinders that need to be done. I still need to put the new seat on. I took these floor pans off both sides so I can kind of see in here what I'm up against. Those pins are going to be very hard to get out of there. I really need to see if I can get the light in the right spot. Oh boy, you guys can kind of see what's going on here. Get my hand out of the way. Maybe this side. Yeah. I really need to get the roll pin out of the back side and then bring the pin out this side because there's nowhere for it to go through the back side without pulling the dash out of it. And I don't really want to do that if I don't have to. Um, I need to get that figured out how I'm going to do it though. I think right now I'm going to pull these front pins again, maybe retract these cylinders and then let them fall down in this hole. See if I can get a better look at all that. It is tight quarters. I'm not real sure how they even press those roll pins down in there. Because unless they did it and then they welded the top plate on here, but I don't think so. It's just freaking tight. So that's what I need to do today. But I did wash the dozer off. Try to get rid of some of that grease. And it was a nice day yesterday, so good time to get it cleaned up for when I'm ready to take pictures of it to get it sold. But... I really need to get them bushings put in there first. So let's see if we can figure out how to do that. Got that pin out of there. It honestly wasn't too bad. Um, here it is. What I did was I pushed the roll pin all the way up in here with a bar down underneath just like that. So it was all hanging out the top. And then I took a die grinder and I cut the top of the roll pan off flush. That was, that made it so I could push the pin back that direction. There's a groove on the other side of this cylinder that the roll pin sits in that keeps it from turning, keeps it, the main pin from turning. Well, when I was able to push it back that direction, then uh, I could spin this roll pin or the main pin, sorry. And then I took a roll pin punch and I got back in here and I drove it that way. The only problem was is there wasn't enough room for my hand to hold on to the roll pin punch. So once I got it uh, driven flush, I found this piece of, I think it's 5 16 cold roll. And I got it back there and tapped the roll pin the rest of the way out and then pulled the whole pin out this direction. But now, I think you can see it. I've got the new bushing drove into there. 
just used a normal seal race driver for that um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put one roll pin in this halfway through I got new ones here right here put one of them in there and I think we'll double check quick I gotta set you guys down. Hang on a second. There's my roll pin. It will fit through here. So I'll get it put in there. Push the pin into where it needs to go. Now well, I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna drive that back pin in. I might have to wait on this outside one actually because that's going to want to be in that groove for me to get that back one started so I'm going to have to wait on this outside one put the pin in drive this roll pin push the whole pin back to where it needs to go and then probably pry this one down into where it needs to go it's kind of tricky but it is possible so I'm on the other side and I didn't show you guys this on the first one, but I think you'll like to see it. You can see that hole in the pin where the roll pin needs to go, but I don't really have any way to hold it to start it and drive it in there. So what I did was on one end of this rod, I just went over the bench grinder and I turned a little shelf on the end of it. So then I just set that roll pin on that shelf and that's how I can get it to stab in there it's not uh, extremely tight on it or anything but it's enough to get it started and then I can drive it in last thing I want to show you is how I got the roll pan into there because there's not enough room on top to swing at it um, there's actually a hole down below it you can see it so I started it up through that hole and then with a uh, adjustable pry bar, let me get my stuff together here. This guy, I was able to uh, get it started and then I used a short bolt to push it the rest of the way in and then a uh, big long punch got underneath it pried it up to where it needs to go so it wasn't too bad I don't even think I have an hour total into doing these rear bushings so that was way less of a project than I thought it'd be there's one more thing I want to take care of and I'll have to roll under here to show you what I got going on all right well there is no room under here Get my arms around here. That, oh man, look at me shake. Uh, that is where the last bit of play is. Let's see if I can get a couple things aimed here. Oh, wow. Right up in there. It's where the dozer frame kind of mounts to the frame of the machine you can see that crack what my plan is is i'm going to jam a plate in there and then i'm going to tack weld it or put a bead along this bottom side right there just take up that that gap and that should take the last of the play out of the dozer for what i can chase down anyways so I'm going to try to get set up to get something tacked in under there. Better get a tape measure and kind of see how big a thing I need. Show you guys what I did. I can get weaseled up underneath here again. There's that plate I was talking about. I got one on both sides. Turned out good.
That actually got the last of the play out of the bulldozer. This old girl's all done. I got it listed for sale. A couple different guys asking me questions about it, so hopefully I'll get it sold fairly soon. You can see I got the new seat put on too. It all turned out really good. Gauges all work, except for the tack. It's, it works half the time, but it's good enough to uh, go move a lot of dirt for somebody. Last thing I wanna say is I'm up to almost 200 subscribers now. It's most I've ever had. Didn't ever really think that even that many people would wanna watch me piddle away on this old equipment in my shop, but I wanted to say thanks to you guys. I really appreciate you hanging out and sticking with me to watch me work on some of this old stuff. It means a lot. I've got some big plans for old Tropic Thunder and that step deck over there coming up fairly soon, things that need to get done. And uh, I ended up buying something else It'll be in the next upcoming video that I bet you guys will think is pretty cool too. Thanks for watching.